Hello and welcome to the video. This is to help a Patreon of mine out, a gentleman called Tomaz. Now Tomaz has been trying to follow along with other videos on YouTube that are doing this thing here, which is where there's a number of mixes and logical switches. And the idea is, is that you can arm your quadcopter, but when you flick the arm switch, it doesn't immediately go to the arming value. You have to also hold the momentary switch for like a second for it all to happen. There is a problem with this is that once you've gone through that cycle you can then arm the quadcopter straight away and it's kind of one of the vagaries of open tx now i've been trying to figure out a more sophisticated way of doing it and this was at as far as i got just using logical switches because that is kind of a weird way that open tx works so if i just simulate this uh, this is my arming switch so if i put sa into the arming position hold sh then channel five goes high, there we are, we're flying around until I drop SA back and it drops back to the middle channel position. So I just set the beta flight for the high value. However, this mix has exactly the same problem as the other mixes you may have seen. Now I've been through the cycle once, I can actually arm using just the mode switch, just the arming switch, without having to mess about with all this SH business. And that means that once you've done it once, you uh, are gonna have a different experience every time. And that's quite dangerous when we're talking about arming. There is a better way to do it. And this is using both logical switches and special functions to make things happen. So let me show you how this works. If I simulate this, exactly the same thing. So SA is my um, arming switch. So uh, we're gonna pull it forward to arm the copter. We're gonna pull SH forward for a second and we're all armed. There we are, channel five is great, we're flying around. And then we're gonna disarm, channel five drops back to zero. And then now if I do SH again, oh look, nothing happens. Until I bring SH forward again, we're into arm, now I can fly around and immediately disarm. This is a much safer, better way to do it in my humble opinion. So let me show you what I've done. So in the mixes, we have the arm switch being turned on and off, but we're gonna come back to that in a minute. Logical switches are much simpler in this way of doing it. All I'm detecting is when the arming switch isn't in the back position. So let me just show you that one. So SH, when SA isn't in the back position, i.e. here when it's somewhere else, and SH is in the front position, which is what that's checking for, L1 will turn on. So let me just show you that. So when SA is in any position apart from that very back position, so it could be in the middle, could be forwards, pull SH and there's L1 comes on, that's great. And when SA is on the back position and SH is in the back position as well, i.e. we're in the disarm state, then 02 comes on. Okay, so now we can detect when the positions are either in where we want them for armed and we can also detect when they're in the unarmed state as well and all i've done with logical switch three is just uh, something a little bit weird is used global variables now this is what we're doing so when we detect that we are in an armed position uh, we have the global variable, the value has been changed to one. And you might not have noticed that in the last time. When we detect that the switches are in the disarm state, i.e. both at the top position, we're changing the global variable to zero. So let me just show you that again. So here we can see the global value is zero. We have channel five, the arming channel in this instance, set to the low position. Let me just put everything ready. I'm going to arm the copter. Bang, I'm armed. Now look, the global value is now set to one. And then when I put SA back into the back position, the global value drops to zero and it drops away. And that's what the third logical switch is doing. It's when the global variable is one, then logical switch three is turned on. So rather than use lots of nested logical switches, which to be honest can get you into a real pickle in OpenTX, what we're doing is we're detecting the armed and the disarmed positions of the switches using the simple AND command, and they're using the special function to use global variable one like a value in a program really with one being armed and zero being disarmed and then we're turning on logical switch three to detect when global variable is one so let me just show you that again so here we are going to sa we're going to arm it 
when global variable goes one logical switch three is turned on and that's the last little bit so in the mixes we have one setting uh, source is max because it's not related to anything uh, apart from itself and when logical switch three is on we have a value of 100 and when logical switch three is not on that's what the exclamation mark means then the value is minus 100. So hopefully that's a better way to do it. You just need a couple of logical switches uh, where you're detecting the armed and disarmed position. The armed position has a little delay, so you have to press and hold the momentary switch in order to activate it. We're using special functions to set the global variable for each of those conditions. And then finally, the last logical switch is kind of uh, turning on and turning off when we have detected that we've got an armed state. And that allows it to be much safer and to continue to operate even after you've been through the cycle once you can continue to arm and disarm and it will work the same way and keep arming the throttle. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what I'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.